Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Deacon and welcome to my incredible podcast. Now before we commence this episode, do not forget to Hulk smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, share this with your boys and your fat ass families, follow me on Instagram, smash that bell notification button. And of course, as always, enjoy! Let's get started! Our top story for today shall be men have it much harder than females. Now, ladies and gentlemen, especially for my fellow brothers out there, this one is for you. For all of you men out there, for those of you that have been struggling hard in life, this one is for you. Along with that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Back in my middle school days, my high school days, and in my college days, let's just say that I was like most of you men out there. I did not have it easy. I will be going into details about some of the obstacles that I had to face when I was in my teen years. I will also be going into concrete detail as to what other conflicts men had to overcome when we were in our younger years. So, gentlemen, as men, we are the ones that have to go through hard times. But as they say, hard times can transform men into stronger men. Or should I say, stronger leaders. That's what I would say to that. So, as men, several obstacles that we have to face and overcome are the following. 1. Confidence. Now, I'm going to create a hypothetical situation. When you were back in middle school, you may have seen uh, a female that you were into and you were learning how to muster the courage and the inner masculine strength to ask her out. Now, you wanted to spend some decent quality time with her. However, you may have been that wallflower, if you will. You know, that young kid that had anxiety issues and you were perhaps afraid of what other people around her would think of you. You may have been scared of what other people would think of you when you were around a female that you were into. And these beta male haters and beta female cunts would talk shit about you behind your back. That's number two, by the way. Learning how to deal with beta male haters and beta female haters. Through experience, I have learned that the best revenge you could ever earn and use against your haters is living a better life than your haters. For instance, if you're earning more money than them, if you have a bigger home than them, if you have a better looking car than your haters, if you have a more luxurious lifestyle than your haters, then you are in a far more superior position than them. A mentor taught me this lesson. Haters will make you rich. In other words, using the power of the internet let these haters hate but as for you concentrate on your goals and your ambitions through your actions it will demonstrate to the whole world that their comments will not move you or sway you whatsoever from your purpose and your mission in life three societal standards or in other words standards that society expects men to meet now let me try to break it all down for you Nowadays, society expects men to do everything for females, while on the other side of the same token, females do not have to do a damn thing for men. Society expects men to hold doors for females, pay for all the bills, pay for child support and vagina money for the remainder of our lives, pull chairs for these females, always be there for them in case if they need a shoulder to cry on, you know, being that emotional tampon that they need during tough times because they don't want to be alone and you will get rewarded with a bad case of blue balls being stuck in friend zone with blue balls while she gets piped down by the chads and the brads and the tyrones she's ignoring all of your text messages on purpose so that she can get you to chase her more like a puppy dog pe begging for her attention all of these standards are what society expects from us so as a response what we should do as strong men is to go against what society taught us Men that are strong supporters of the MGTOW and the Red Pill communities, what guys like us would do 
is go 100% against everything that was taught to us ever since we were small kids. From Disney films, all the way to soap operas and Hollywood drama movies, we were programmed to chase females and we were taught that it was normal to do that. But it's not. I guarantee you, these movies and TV shows were made by the weakest beta male cucks that sat all the way in the back of the classroom and not once did they ever raise their hand to answer any questions. Those were the kind of guys that made these shit films and stupid ass TV shows about weak ass beta males chasing the punani like puppy dogs. Gentlemen, quick piece of advice. Do not become one of those beta male cucks that chases the, the peace leaf like there's no tomorrow. Now, number four. As men, we have to work tirelessly to build value. But females in general, they don't have to work as hard or as long as men. Think of it this way. Females in general are born and are automatically given value. Meaning they get to start off with more opportunities than men. Versus us men, we have to start building and earning value from ground zero and work our way up during our entire lives. Now Tom Likas did teach his audience this lesson. Females in general, they're like Superman when he encounters kryptonite, which means that most, not all of them, but most females have an expiration date. The day that they start to lose their value and their SMV, also which stands for sexual marketplace value, begins to decline all the way down to ground level zero as she ages. However, for us men, typically our prime begins when we are in our early 30s. Gentlemen, as long as you take care of yourselves physically, mentally, spiritually, and so forth, we will stand out from the herd. Keep that in mind. Now, number five, dating. That's right, the dating scene. First, let's talk about the number of opportunities that females get when they're in college. As a female, when she's in her 20s, do you even know how many opportunities she gets when she's in her prime while she's going to college? You know how many choices she has? Her phone is filled with all sorts of beta male orbiters, and the list is so big, it can fit a bad boy's rap sheet, okay? Whereas your typical 21-year-old guy who's going to school trying to earn his bachelor's but is not famous around the school, guys like him, he will not be noticed. He would be shunned, and the females in his school, they wouldn't even give him the time of day, let alone look at him. However, if you were in high school or in college, and you were one of those popular Chads or Brads or Tyrones, you were playing sports for the college you represented, and extracurricular activities, not only would that give you a lot of fame, but you would also get noticed by everybody around the school, and even the females would at least consider giving you the time of day. Those guys that were at the top 20%, 15%, or even the 10%, those guys would have more options than the rest of the 80% of beta males in the entire school. The point I'm trying to get across is with one key word, and that word is competition. As men, you want to become number one, you have to compete. You have to get in the game. However, females in general, they don't have to do that much work, especially the physically attractive ones. All they would have to do is put on a sexy outfit, put on a pair of heels and some makeup, and that's it. They barely have to work out in order to look physically presentable. The main point is this. In regards to the dating scene, the top 20, 15, and 10% of men, aka the Chads and the Brads and the Tyrones, they may have the ability to select as many females as they want. However, the females are the ones that get to choose who they want to hang out with. Even the average looking ones will have more options than your typical wallflower beta male that has no game. Of course, let's not forget about these fucking dating apps that society provided for the females. Because with these apps, they're like menus. To the females in general, metaphorically speaking, it's like skipping to the front of the line with an express pass as they walk into a five-star restaurant, their table awaits, they sit down, they're given a menu, and they get to decide which Chad or Brad or Tyrone they want to spread their legs for. That's exactly how these dating apps work. 
Number 6. Job Opportunities As soon as females graduate from college, they get to start off with more job opportunities than men just because their beauty gives them one strong foot through the door and the degrees that they got from school. Folks, let me make something perfectly clear to both men and females. Just because you got a degree from any college does not necessarily mean you are hot shit. A degree simply says, hey, I could do this, I could do that. It don't mean you're smart. And by the way, gents, just so you know, females hold give or take two thirds of all student loan debt in the US. They are carrying most of the student loan debts. Now keep this in mind. Just because they have degrees, regardless of how much money they owe in terms of student loan debts, does not mean that these females are better than men. That's the vibe that I'm getting from the other side. So females, quick message. Please do not show off with your degrees and do not show off with your fancy corporate jobs, okay? We get it. You can climb the corporate ladder and one day earn a six-figure salary. We get it. You're capable of achieving good things. However, there's no need to brag about your fancy job. Just keep that in mind, all right? Number seven, men are being shamed on a daily basis. So a lot of you are asking, what do I mean by this? Well, as most of you, if not all of you know, masculinity is under attack or better yet men in general are always in the hot seats because of the feminist movement men have been shamed for a long time okay the movement has invented all sorts of terminologies that include manspreading which is where a man spreads his legs too wide mansplaining where a man interrupts a female while she's speaking and so forth what's next they're going to come up with a new word called man jumping which is where a guy does jumping jacks or some shit and his man titties jump up and down or man line where a guy lies to a female about something that's not even that big of a deal something as small as who he's hanging out with is he hanging out with his friends or with a different female that she might be jealous about what about man yelling this is where a guy could scream at a female during an argument other ways of shaming men would be the following a female would say all sorts of things such as, Oh, you must be bitter. You must be jaded. You must be misogynistic. You must have a small penis. You must not get laid. You must be an insult. Listen. All of these beta male haters and beta female haters are using 2018 shaming tactics. And here we are living in 2021. Where the fuck have you been all this time? Look, the feminist movement uses the word man and attaches that word onto another word and they think that it makes a new word. Again, 2018 shaming tactics. You must hold doors for females when you don't have to. Men must approach females when they don't have to. Men must be the ones asking the females out when they don't have to. These are all ways of shaming men. It's a silence. And guess what? The media, the government, the Me Too, and the feminist movements they don't want us to talk about this because those movements are not looking to establish equality. They want control. They want more power over men. You have heard of the phrase tear down the patriarchy, yes? That's what these movements are trying to do. Overall, in conclusion, there are several points I would like to get across. One, gentlemen, stop meeting society's standards. If they tell you to do something but it smells like shit, it probably is shit. Do not fucking do it. Turn around and walk the other way. Two, do not be afraid to compete against your haters. They tell you that you cannot do something? Prove them wrong and challenge them. Three, gentlemen, start building value and confidence that will build your character and it will get you far in life. Four, Another one for the gents. Stop chasing the females. That means stop being thirsty for some peace leave. Five, start creating something like bit online businesses if you have to. That will help you create job opportunities of your own just in case if you don't have anything on your plate. Six, as soon as you encounter someone that intends to shame you for anything, do not be afraid to give them the middle finger and confront them with confidence. Challenge them and show them who's boss. So, ladies and gents, this concludes this episode of my incredible podcast. So, thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to Hulk smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Share this with your boys and your fat ass families. 
follow me on Instagram. Smash that bell notification button. And every single one of you have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace out.